Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin Davis. Today we have a pretty special episode for you. We have something new from rackandheli.com to show you. I love this kind of show and tell. This is super neat because I got my Zayrock a couple months ago. I had fun with it. You probably saw the review on the channel. I really flew it to its best ability. I put a little FPV cam on top of it and did some FPV with it. It was fun. I had a lot of fun banging it around. Now, it's been sitting here in the studio for you know, a little over a month now and it hasn't been flown for quite a while so I've been busy with a lot of other stuff but I wanted to show you this kit because I saw it on their website I thought it was super awesome so I had to get one to show you guys um, not too hard to take apart it's really simple inside here if you open up the top this is what you're gonna see you're gonna see four motors here that are just kind of pinned in here by these plastic can see them a little bit closer little plastic standoffs here uh, they're not bolted in there so removing them is really really easy now I'm gonna give you a little bit of advice on your build and uh, I'm gonna show you this other model that I've completely built up over here sitting to the side but um, first when you open this up you're gonna see the flight controller sitting here it's only 3M sticky taped down, so you'll need to take a really thin screwdriver and kind of pry the 3M tape up on each side. And take your time removing it. Make sure all the wires are off the flight controller when you finally do pop it off. But the wires go back on very simply, uh, and I'll, I'll show you how mine's set up here. I'll take the top of it off for you. Um, you'll also have some gears in here that you'll pull out and put on your other frame. Uh, as you're gonna so as well as some LEDs you can purchase LEDs on Rackens website they come in these little packages uh, and you can get many different colors there's white green red blue uh, all sorts of colors so leave these on your Racken and get some of these to put on so I, I chose yellow and white for mine kind of going along with this theme but pretty easy to take this apart. There are a bunch of little tiny screws, so you're going to need some of your super tiny little screwdrivers. Most of us already have these, so if you don't have these, pick some of these up. They're great. Okay, guys, so here's the cool little box that you get with your Blade Zayrock kit. This is from Rack and Heli, and they started doing these a while back, and I really like these boxes because they act as storage boxes later for me to keep all of my extra hardware and accessories for my Blade Zayrock in here. Now I've got some extra bolts and screws and nuts in here and some bearings that are left over from the build. Now these were on the original arms the Blade Zayrock on the motor post. Now take those off when you do your build because if you try to slam it through there, guess what? This is going to double up. Rack and Heli already put new bearings inside your arms on your kit. So that's really, really nice they did that. So I'm going to save those for later. Uh, those are probably fine, but if I do blow a bearing on the new kit, I have replacements. Now, additionally in the kit, you get some stickers. There's plenty of stickers to choose from and colors in here. Also, a word of advice for you guys. If you're going to build this one, get an extra hardware pack. Be sure to do that in case you're short a bolt. You won't delay your, your build process. That's pretty important. You can also get extra motor stems on their site. That's pretty sweet. And they have LEDs. Bunches of different colors of LEDs. You have red, blue, green, yellow, white. All kinds of different colors. So you can pick and choose. I did leave the LEDs on my Blades Aeroc, the original ones on there, so those are going to be nice to have. Plenty of spare LEDs. Now, let's move this out of the way for a second. I want to show you the directions that came along with this. Now, these aren't really directions. They're more like an exploded view for you to, to look at as you're assembling this kit. It shows you the different size screws and what screw goes where they're all it's all labeled on here for you so pay close attention to what millimeter screw uh, or self tapping screw goes where so there are machine style screws and self tapping screws in here so a few different types of hardware but it's not that difficult it looks more difficult than it really is now let's show you the frame you guys have been waiting long enough for this here it is this is the blade Zayrock frame from Rack and Heli, very, very cool. I love this frame. And I've 
bought stuff from Rack and Heli for years. These guys have been designing and engineering frames for longer than most drone companies out there because these guys were around during the multi-rotor uh, first early days and they were designing frames, uh, aftermarket frames for blade helis probably 10 years ago. So these guys are really, really legit in the industry. I love their stuff. It's really high quality. And this stuff comes out of Vietnam. It's not a China-based product. But look at that. The design is just impeccable. Whoever their designer is, sitting somewhere on a computer and putting this stuff together so that all your components fit, it's absolutely amazing. Now my build came out pretty decent because I sat at the kitchen table and I really took my time putting it together. This top plate right here is super ultra thin to save you some weight. It's probably probably a half mil up there. It's super thin. You can see that there. And you have an optional spot in the front for putting an FPV camera, which I'm going to do and hopefully give you a little flight test and some, some footage from my flying. It looks like the blades will be a little bit in the picture if you decide to put it there. You could also put it up top, but I don't plan on really flying this one super aggressively. Now the bottom plate does look like it's probably one and a half mil and the arms are probably one and a half to two mil. So I don't really think it's going to break. It's actually pretty lightweight. I'll post the, the weight of this one here for you. And I have my LEDs mounted on there. Really nice collars for the LEDs underneath here. You can run your wires through this hole right here, up and under. And they're just long enough to go in and fit on the flight controller. Now, let's talk about the arms. The arms are some of the most important part of this build. I'm going to flip this over so you can see it. There's two collars here that will hold the motor in place. Now, if you can look at this really closely, you want to make double sure that the stem and the gear inside here is fitting exactly on top of the motor gear. And you can see I have it pretty tight in there. And when I move the prop, the motor gear is moving. So if this is not set up perfectly, it's just going to free spin in here when you try to spool up. So you want to make sure that all of this is dialed in really nice and that your motor is sitting in the correct position. There is a little piece of silicone in here that's going to sort of hold it in between these two pieces. And you can use Loctite here and here. And make sure you tighten these up, but not over tighten them. So I ran my wires up along here. I'll probably put some electrical tape over top of this. And if you wanted to add more durability to this, you could take a little dab of hot glue and put it on the end of here just to make sure that your motor wires don't get severed in a little bit of a spill uh, or a crash. And then once you have a little piece of hot glue there, go ahead and cover this long wire up here with some electrical tape and that'll keep it from getting exposed in a crash. And you'll have your battery. You can do a bottom mount here like I'm going to do. Or you can put it up inside the frame here, up underneath the flight controller. There is room to run it through there. Okay, so we're looking at this from the top to the bottom here. And I'm going to save you a lot of time on your build. The flight controller goes on here. And if you use some VHB, 3M VHB tape underneath here and you make sure that none of these metal connections are going to touch that carbon plate where it's going to be mounted. If you use some VHB it'll be a little bit lower than the 3M tape that was originally on my Xerox so you'll get a better clearance for your top plate and the flight controller. That's what I would recommend. So you can get VHB at Home Depot or any hardware store and it's actually really nice double-sided sticky tape so make sure you do that so you don't have any shorts. Now, also going to give you a little diagram of how this is going to work for plugging in stuff. So if you took all your wires off and you're wondering where everything goes, now the closest mini JST to each side where the motor is going to plug in. So that's where each plug goes. They don't get reversed or mixed up. They just go to the closest spot 
to each motor. So that's kind of nice. It's very simple. And your LEDs will go in these four points here. You don't have to worry about mixing those up. Those are no problem. If you mix the motor wires up, you're going to get something operating wrong. So I always start with that right rear because I know that one turns right. And then the one diagonally across, that one also turns right. This one's going to turn left. And this one over here is going to turn left. That should save you a little bit of time in your setup with your flight controller. Now let's talk about the posts. Racken, if you're listening to this video, I'm going to say that I had a little bit of tough time putting the post on. I feel like these screws could be just a little bit longer and I'm pretty sure these are the 6mm M2s, the self-tapping screw that the diagram said to put on here so I feel like they're a little bit short. I feel like they should be just a little bit longer. Maybe a 7mm would be a little better uh, because you need more clearance coming through both of these pieces of carbon here. If you have a 7mm screw, self-tapping screw laying around somewhere, maybe use that so you get a little better connection here. Uh, coming from the top plate, no problem though, because that's really, really thin. That's only probably 0.5 mil, and there's no problem there. But I did have to hold it with a pair of needle nose pliers to tighten these top screws, because this post will rotate. Okay guys, this is the Blade Zayrock, the original design, and we made it look like this. Now, that's amazing, because we went from looking like a multi-rotor school bus uh, maybe a short bus to something really awesome looking. So this is quite an upgrade from Rack and Heli. Now some final thoughts and tips on building yours. Like I said, start with the arms first and really sit at the kitchen table, take your time, turn on some music and relax and enjoy this build because this is, this is more like a, a modeler or a hobby type of build. You're going to really have to take your time and if you do it slowly, you're going to get it right. If you do it fast, you're probably going to, if you rush this, you're going to get things wrong and you're going to have to do things over. So it did stump me a couple times during the build and I had to go back and redo things. Um, particularly the LED mounts here, I put them through the wrong side and then they were kind of falling out the bottom. So there is a collar underneath here and the wire will go through the collar and then you'll mount the LED up inside there. So things like that will kind of get you along with this build. So pay special attention when you're putting them together um, each step of the way. So I enjoyed putting the kit together and I definitely enjoyed showing it off to you guys. It's a, it's a really cool frame. So let's go outside, come outside to the field with me and let's do a flight test of this uh, Rack and Heli Blade Zayrock frame. Super cool. All right, guys, we have a small hurricane happening just about around me right now, and it's even raining a little bit, but you know what? I'm going to fly this Blades Aeroc Rack and Heli upgrade for you, even if it gets wet. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and power up. See if I can remember which modes put me in the flip mode and the acro mode. Got a fully charged battery. I believe it's this one that gives me a little more tilt, but you can really see those yellow props in the air. See if I can find that quicker mode. Yeah, the yellow is nice. You can see that really well. Now I know why they put yellow props on the front of this for a trainer. Try to bring it in a little closer. Oh, there we go. Now I'm in that second mode and I can really get moving. I can also do flips. So if you checked out my upgrade video, make sure that your flight controller is nicely stable, level, and mounted perfectly in center of that carbon plate. And you'll have a good flying copter, just like this one. This is pretty awesome. This is a huge upgrade from the original. Now I'm thinking about trying to go into that sort of acro mode. There we go, a little more tilt. 
It doesn't quite have the power and authority of a race drone, but this is not supposed to be a race drone. This is purely a trainer, but now with this frame on there, to put a little mini FPV cam on there, it would really look pretty sweet. I might be out of battery. Let's just pick it up and make sure. I'm gonna go ahead and flip back into that basic mode. <clears throat> I might be done, folks, but that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I probably got a little more battery. It looks like a transformer or something. I like the white LEDs in the back and the yellow on the front. See if I can get a good shot of this for you. Super cool. Kind of hear those gears winding a little bit in there. Such a cool looking frame. And it's pretty, it's pretty uh, lightweight, so wouldn't worry about durability factor too much with this because the lighter, the better. That means the less breakage. Trying to find that other mode again. So in this mode, it won't let you let you do any flips. It's gonna let you fun fly. This is on a 1S 6800, I think it was, under there. It's a pretty big battery for a 1S. One of the bigger ones I've seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it into a close hover and then we're gonna land. All right, so be careful landing in grass. If you heard that, that was the gears scraping. So you wanna land on a nice flat surface to make sure that you don't strip your gears up inside those motors. But look at that, folks, that is pretty cool. That is a nice looking frame. And I just put a little tape on my battery on the bottom. Let me check out that battery. That was a, let's see what that was. A 750 milliamp on the bottom there. 1S750. LEDs look super awesome on there. Hopefully you can see those pretty good against the sky right now. Kind of overcast, so. Hey guys, thanks again for watching. I enjoyed showing you this one. This one's one of my new favorites. We'll see you on the next one.